On November 18, a group of scientists were carrying out what they expected to be a completely routine survey of bighorn sheep in the area when they encountered a strange metal monolith. Almost instantly, the discovery took the world by storm, launching numerous investigations into its origins, countless memes and even copycat monoliths in Romania and California before the structure was dismantled under the cover of night on November 27. Strangely enough, the mysterious object wasn't taken as the work of aliens or evidence of a vast conspiracy but instead was most commonly seen to be a work of art, which was seemingly validated when a prankster art collective took credit for the structure without providing many details. Despite its largely mysterious origins, the monolith has largely been fit into the context of land art, an art movement dating back to the 1960s and 70s, where artists expanded the nature of sculpture to create artworks that were intimately tied to their environments and sometimes located in remote landscapes. At the first glance, this seems to be an excellent explanation. After all, some of the most well-known works of land art, such as Robert Smith's Sons, Spiral Jetty, and Nancy Hall's Sun Tunnels are located in Utah. Dig a bit deeper, however, this quickly gives way. Thaw some people made the trek to the desert to see the monolith in person. Most of the attention paid to the monolith has taken place online with individuals reacting to it on the internet and social media. The ideas behind land art cannot account for the frenzy of attention, but turning to the history and techniques of net art can help to illustrate just what it is about the monolith that has enticed so many. Essential to land art was the notion of site specificity, meaning that the artwork was necessarily tied to its particular location, sort of an art version of saying, well, you had to be there. Land art might have spread through images and documentation, but the art itself was focused on creating interventions in the landscape that generated particular experiences in the viewer. However, as the monolith has spread so quickly not only through the internet, acting as a backdrop for photos and inspiration for memes from the people and corporations alike, but also through the copycat versions in very different environments, it becomes clear that there's nothing site-specific about the monolith that draws our interest until we know for certain who made it and why. An endless number of theories and ideas can circulate, allowing it to tape into anyone and everyone's interest. Here the monolith seems to resemble not so much land art as it does a much more recent form of art making. Net art. The monoliths look more like net art. Born alongside the rise of the internet in 1990s, net art was a new kind of art that was made in and distributed through the internet. Without the researching of the white cube, the standardization space of museums and galleries that separates art from the rest of the world, net art tended to create a kind of accidental audience that might not know that what they were seeing was art. After all, encountering a work of net art was often no different than visiting any other web page and in many cases they were indistinguishable. Far from limiting the potential of these kinds of works, the lack of researching was often seen as a benefit and was explicitly explored by artists who retained a certain sense of indifference as to whether a viewer regarded their work as an art or not. The monolith works in exactly the same way, a bizarre object stripped from any understandable knowable context. It offers no objective truth to discover, only an open-ended mystery. Far from being a flaw, the monolith's unknowing ability is the very source of its power allowing it to act as a sort of lightning rod, attracting any and all beliefs and interests. It's no mistake in that these formerly underground tactics have since become a kind of viral marketing, which in turn explains why so many people have reacted with wariness to the monolith, worrying that it might just be a lead up to be a big ad campaign. As is so often the case with a mystery, reaching a conclusion can only lead to disillusion. Without its sense of possibility, the monolith is just another strange thing that happened. In a recent New York Times article investigating the Utah monolith's dis appearance, the author stopped to wonder, would it lose its aura and power if we knew who had created it? The answer, of course, is yes.